and I think they may help you to have an idea of what's happening here in this continent, especially in remote locations. So my, my projects, they have to do with uh, satellite communications in remote locations. Well, just uh, uh, reinforcing what Mr. Gunnar said, uh, it's not about just giving connectivity to people, you have to provide them with a complete service. And uh, this has been happening here. Uh, my side of the project is essentially connectivity, but all of these projects we have been working on from uh, Mexico, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, uh, they all have a, a large team working also to provide uh, all the IT infrastructure and all the training and uh, making people uh, capable of, of using the tools that are made available. And uh, we have also seen, as uh, Mr. Gunnar said, some local entrepreneurship uh, arising in these places. So new business opportunities and new um, um, value has been created to these local communities. Next one, please. Well, uh, we have two major projects in the region. Although we are present in several countries, uh, the, the, the major projects we have are the Compartel project in Colombia uh, and the GSEC project in Brazil. Both of them are targeted at uh, remote locations and to promote digital inclusion. Most of them are targeted at schools, but they have very similar characteristics. Uh, one thing that has been said before is the, the business model. Uh, uh, Brazil and Colombia have different approaches. Uh, here in Brazil, we have uh, a service model whereby the federal government pays a monthly fee as a service, as if they were just hiring uh, some standard ADSL service. Uh, in Colombia, it's a different model. Uh, the government gives you a subsidy, you buy all the equipment, so they have a lower monthly fee to pay. And also in the Colombian model, they have a, a shared type of uh, subsidy model whereby uh, the government pays a portion of the monthly fee and the local institution pays another portion. It is true uh, what Mr. Surf said about the cost of satellite communications, but uh, these costs have come down. And when you compare to some other costs which the, the local schools or institutions have, uh, although they may have a satellite connection that's much more expensive than ADSL connection, uh, it's uh, sometimes cheaper than the power they're, they're paying in the school, the electrical power. So it, it's not a, an absurd fee for someone to pay, it's, uh, but it's higher than uh, other uh, ADSL costs. So uh, well, essentially uh, all these projects are like uh, full turnkey projects. You have to cable the schools, you have to provide everything. And uh, behind our work, which is essentially a connectivity service, uh, we have all these people who come and train people to use. And uh, there's something funny in this, because they say they, they are more, mostly concerned about training uh, the teachers in these schools, because the kids learn by themselves. So really, they have to go there and train the people who are taking care of the, the schools. Well, uh, this is just to show you some examples of installations where we have these antennas installed in the schools. And the typical, uh, um, oops. Can I come back, please? Yeah. Uh, so this is a typical installation we, we have with some computers. Depending on the site, we may have from one to 16 computers. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and typically in these installations, uh, we share the, uh, although it's installed uh, in a school, uh, they many times they open up uh, the telecenter for the community. And uh, I just showed you the following slide, but I'm going to ask you a question before I follow to the next slide. And I'm going to ask you if you know what the peak uh, traffic hour is uh, for these uh, telecenters and for data traffic flow to these schools. Anybody would guess what the peak hour is? What? Yeah, uh, please show me the, show the next slide. Uh, the peak hour is from 7 a.m. to midnight. It's peak, it's totally flat. So this is, I took this yesterday. The traffic here is kind of uh, bursty because it, it was a Sunday, but uh, as soon as it gets to 7 a.m., everybody logs in and they go flat till midnight. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, they hang out at night, go and have a beer. So it just, and this Sunday, so traffic is flat, and we thought, why are these guys using all the bandwidth? So we thought it was a bandwidth problem. 
It's also a computer problem. They do not have many computers, so they have to arrive at 7 a.m. in the school so they can log on and they stay till, till midnight. So this is the, the image of what's happening here in Latin America. People are really logging on. And, uh, and people think that here in Brazil, people just want to play football. They also want to access the internet. And this is the major proof here. So next one, please. Uh, this is uh, an overview of the Colombian project. We are working on the northern, northern zone of the, the country uh, with about uh, 3,000 sites, uh, which are schools, municipalities, hospitals, and military garrisons. So this is the Brazilian project. Uh, the Brazilian project uh, has more or less the same size of the Colombian project. It's uh, for 3,500 schools and also covers hospitals, uh, military garrisons, so they are very similar. It also has an IP uh, VoIP uh, service, and uh, really uh, people are using VoIP, but uh, they're more enthusiastic about using uh, really the, the data part of the service. And uh, there was a, a heavy work done by the Brazilian government on uh, free software, so uh, there's a big effort to, to stimulate these people to create their home pages, to develop some type of uh, business around this uh, service, which is made available to their communities. So this is a Brazilian, uh, and so people have their mail servers and uh, uh, file sharing, uh, discussion groups, and, and all the services. Essentially, there's a, a develop, development group which uh, does all this and using free software. Uh, well, this is another project, the last one I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, it's another interesting uh, project we are doing, which is uh, distance learning. And distance learning projects are really uh, growing a lot in this region because there are lots of people wanting to get educated and they do not have uh, teachers available. So we did this uh, project for uh, a state here in Brazil, which is called Roraima. It's really in the north of the country. So everything that's north of the Amazon Everything gets more difficult here because uh, infrastructure is really scarce. Even energy uh, to get electrical power here, they have to buy from Venezuela, which is our neighbor in the north. So uh, it's a, a, a remote location. And uh, what was happening here is that uh, if you have a teacher who graduated when she was like 19, 20 years old, and she went to this place, uh, when she was like 50, she would still be a teacher and she would have no uh, would she be updated? Would she know? Uh, she was in, uh, really in a remote location. So they did this project, and this is catching up in other states, which is kind to, uh, to, to train teachers and to make them more up to date because really they, they are getting outdated. So, uh, and we have done this in using uh, the, uh, the internet also. Some, some people from uh, uh, universities in the south of the country can just log into the internet and they can do video conferencing with uh, these remote locations in this uh, remote region of the country. And everything's done uh, over IP with uh, interactive video or it can be just a one-way video, but uh, it's a, a platform we, we host and uh, is used by all the, these people. So, uh, last one please. Just a conclusion, Latin America is experiencing a significant, significant growth in uh, digital inclusion and distance learning project. Uh, national administrations perceive such initiatives as a strategic step in the development of their economies. And uh, in our region here, satellite is playing a key role uh, essentially for remote locations. Uh, just for you to have an idea, uh, we are talking about 3,000 sites in each of these countries. Uh, in Brazil, they are going to expand the satellite coverage to 11,000 schools. Uh, we have over 300,000 schools. So this is just for uh, essentially uh, for, for the farthest locations, because in, in urban area, areas like Rio, people are going to be using ADSL. Um, and digital inclusion projects have evolved from simple internet connectivity programs, where you just gave a port to, to these places, to full user-oriented user and integrated network IT services. So both in Colombia and in Brazil, we also run help desk services, so people can call and, and, and also uh, solve their uh, IT-related problems. So thank you very much. And